When we collaborate with different designers, one of the things that I always look for is to be challenged, to work with people who have a lot of experience and can challenge us, and that's where we learn new things, and that's where we get better at, at our skill and our craft. I'm Greg Buckbinder. I'm the owner of Emico, and this project is Emico House. We're in Venice Beach. We have a lot of other creatives around us, uh, photographers, filmmakers, artists, designers. It's a very fun area to be in. So Emico began in 1944. They made chairs for Navy ships and submarines. They made aluminum chairs, and aluminum chairs were perfect for the application. They were weatherproof, they were fireproof, they were lightweight for the ships. Today we make furniture that is made from waste material, and, and our goal is to do things that will have a long life. The Emico factory is in Hanover, Pennsylvania, which is quite a long way away from where I live. I grew up in California and I spend most of my time out here. This location was unique and special because it allows us to have a place we can have a studio, we could work, we could do things, and also a place that you can live. So it's a live-work location. It was built in 1941. The front area was actually used for a sewing shop. And there's two entrances, one from the back, one from the front, that serviced, at the time, two individual apartments. David actually combined it, so there's two separate living areas and one common area that is a shared area, which is the kitchen, the living room, and, and the balcony. All of the ceilings, when we first found this location, had really ugly insulated panels, and we took out all of that and exposed the beams. They're absolutely beautiful. It's beautiful wood. Then we added uh, a few skylights. The main purpose for that is to let hot air evacuate. And then we thought, well, with the skylight, we can grow a plant up through the building and it gives us something to share with the people that are in the, if you're in the bathroom, you'll be able to look out and see this giant cactus growing up through the center of the building. We wanted the plants to surround us as much as possible. There's something about live plants that make you feel healthy, make you feel like things are good, and it's all organic. So the palette of materials was quite simple. Fewer better things, no toxins. The lime plaster for the walls is just an amazing material. The way the light kind of soaks up into this, and it's a material that actually sequesters carbon. But behind that material is plywood. We use the ash for the floors because we know it's gonna be here forever. It works well, it's strong, it's solid. Downstairs floors, we just grinded the concrete down, and that's our, our floor surface. And the, the timber we used for the balcony was Douglas fir. That was part of the motivation is again, select materials that are gonna have the longest life possible. We chose David's sake as the architect um, because his attention to detail is amazing. So, you know, the handles on the windows, David design, the toilet paper roll, David design. David in the architecture wanted some of the furniture to be part of the architecture. The bench up in the front window, again, that same idea of having something that's permanent, it will stay. It's nice to have things that stay the same. It took us five years to complete this project from start to finish. To me, I'm most proud of the discipline and the process and, and the, the ability to really stay focused, stay on task. And then I guess what makes my heart swell is the mailbox. Uh, that's our signage. It's very small, very simple, very, but if you look at it, it's just beautiful craftsmanship. You know, the notion of legacy for me is, is an important one. And I know this architecture, this building, this structure, There'll be stories as we, as we do things and we, as we live here, and those stories will, will stay with this, with this building long after I'm gone.